Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we are going to look at adding enemies, uh, and in this case comets, to our game. Now starting with the code we finished with last time, uh, we're going to go right in here to the objects.h, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add our, our bad guys, if you will. Um, they're not really bad guys in this game, uh, as a, a, a side shooty kind of defender style game. Basically, going to be having the player shoot down comets that are hurtling towards Earth, um, and so we're going to go ahead and create that that object uh, uh, for us here, which is going to be struck comet. Uh, and this time, I'm putting the semicolon in first so I don't forget it, because I always seem to forget that. And a lot of this is going to look familiar. I'm going to have my ID. I'm going to have my X position. I'm going to have my Y position. Uh, I am going to have whether it is alive or not. I'm going to have its current speed. I'm going to have uh, its bound X, which like I said before, we'll talk about when, uh, when we talk about collision detection, um, and my bound Y added in there. All right, so fantastic. So that is all we need for our comet class. Um, or no, it's not a class, our comet struct, our object, uh, just to keep track of its positions. Now, very much like uh, with the, the bullets in this game, uh, we're going to limit the number of comets because realistically, I mean, we could make it infinite, but how many comets are really going to be on the screen at the same time? Um, too many in the game would just be way too difficult. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, up top here in the globals, I'm going to do a constant int num comets. And I'm going to make it hit 10. There can at maximum be 10 comets on screen. More than likely, we're not ever going to see Tom, 10 comets on the screen, but I wanted to cap it at 10 uh, just to keep it uh, reasonable. And then down here inside my, uh, my variables, I'm going to do comets, comets. So we're going to create our array of comets. All right, fantastic. Um, that'll just be our way of keeping track of the, the number of, uh, of comets we're using. And actually, what I did here, that's actually not, that's kind of, poor practice on my part, so I apologize. I'm going to do it the better way. Um, since we have our, 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 uh, our variable declared as a constant, I can create an array of that size. And then I can only, ch if I need to change it in the future, I can change it up top and I have to change it there. I'm going to do the same for num bullets, like that. It makes no sense to, uh, to use the number twice when it's declared as a constant up at the top there. So uh, just modifying that a little bit, uh, improving the code as we go along. Now, as with the bullets, we need some way to initialize the comet, we need some way to draw the comet, we need some way to start the comet, we need some way to update the comet. Uh, those are all four actions that are needed to get comets on our screen hurtling towards Earth. So we're going to go ahead and create our prototypes now. I'm going to do void init comet, and I'm going to pass in our array of comets. size. Then I'm also going to need draw comet. I'm going to pass in our right there. And then I'm going to need to <clears throat> start the comet. And then finally very much like the bullets, we need to automatically update our comet because it's not controlled by the player, so it'll need to happen. Automatically. So we have a function for that. All right, great. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these prototypes here. And I'm just going to paste them on the bottom so I don't have to retype all that. I'm going to hit these uh, minus signs to reduce that code down, and I'll paste those there. Great. Now. Our knit. And uh, after seeing the way we um, initialize and then fire and then update our bullets, um, this is going to look pretty similar to that. Really, there's contextually no difference between a bullet and a comet. Graphically, they're different in size, and when we get to collision detection, they'll behave differently. Um, really, there's not a whole lot different there. So I'm going to do four ints i equals zero i less than size i plus plus and that won't work I sum up with that i plus plus great alright and I'm going to do uh, for our init I'm just going to do comets sub i 
dot id equals enemy comet sub i dot live equals false comet sub i dot speed equals now I'm having the, the speed actually at five so you're the, the, the enemy the comets are just as fast as the player I'm going to comet sub i dot bound x is going to equal in this case I pick 18 once again that's not going to make a whole lot of sense just yet um, but it will make sense eventually I promise um, 18 all right so our bound x and our bound y is it's going to be 18 all right um, great so we have here um, the initialization taken care of uh, and uh, now we can move on uh, well first let's let's go ahead and plug this in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here uh, to where we're initializing everything and I have my init bullets and now I'm just going to call my init comment and I'm going to pass comments and num comments great okay so that will initialize all of our comment objects great um, so now to draw our comment and our comment is going to be pretty simple it's going to be just actually really like our bullet I'm going to do for int i equals zero i is less than size i plus plus and I'm going to do if comment sub i dot live so we want to draw the living ones and I'm going to do al draw filled circle and the x is going to be comets sub i dot x comet sub i dot y and for circles remember it's just a radius in this case my radius is going to be 20 that's Purely aesthetic. I picked that myself. You know, your your mileage may vary. Uh, L map RGB, and I'm gonna do 255 zero, zero. So my comments are red. All right, great. So uh, we have our draw comment function. Now we're just gonna go ahead back up here to our, our rendering section, uh, and I'm gonna draw it here um, or plug it in here. Draw comments, and I'm gonna pass in comments and. Um, Alrighty, so we have our our uh, our comets uh, initialized. We have our comets being drawn when they're live, and of course now we need some way to make them live, and that is our our start comet function here. And once again, for int i equals zero, i is less than size i plus. We should just copy and paste that. If not, comets the sub i dot live. Remember, we don't want to fire live comets. Uh, we want to fire dead ones to make them appear on the screen. Um, so this is going to look very much like our, our fire bullet. This is our start comet. Um, now here's the big difference. Um, we do not want comets appearing every cycle. Um, you know, we don't want them appearing, you know, every time this, this, this iterates, it's going to attempt to start a comet. And uh, so that means the very first 10 uh, cycles, 10 comets are going to appear really, really fast, and then they're just going to stay there, you know, um, and, and until you destroy one, then it's going to appear almost immediately. And there's going to be no, every game will feel exactly the same. There's going to be no uh, no randomness to it. So what we want to do is we want to uh, change the way the comets come into the game. We don't want it to just be uh, first opportunity for them to come in. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to do if rand, rand being the random number generator, which I have to see, so I will come up here later and do that. If rand, then modulus 500 equals zero. So what that means is every single cycle of our game, we're going to randomly generate a number. Only when it randomly generates zero, which happens one out of 500 times, theoretically, um, a, a, a comet will be created. All right, That might seem pretty, pretty uh, pretty strict. I mean, one out of 500 times, but you're going to see that when these cycles, as fast as they do, and they cycle very fast, um, our comments actually come in at a pretty healthy rate there. Um, if you're curious how I came upon that uh, RAN modulus 500, I just tested a couple different numbers and that one felt right. There's probably better ways to do that. There's probably better ways to figure out when to make things spawn and to randomize it and to, to time it and everything. Like I said, the whole purpose of this game is simplicity. For keeping it simple, 
uh, just so we can get some idea of how all these pieces interlock. Okay, so for every cycle, it's going to find a dead comet, um, and it's going to then call the RAND function modulus 500 to see if it equals zero. If both of those things line up, uh, then it's time to start one of our comets. And to do that, we're going to do comets sub i dot live. We're going to set it equal to true, and then we're going to do comets sub i dot x is going to equal the width. It's going to start all the way on the end of the screen. But here's another one. How do we know where to start our comet? Well, we're going to make that random as well. So if comet sub i dot y is going to equal 30, now this is arbitrary. I picked 30 so there's a buffer of 30 pixels. There's about where, where we won't draw comments close to the screen or close to the, the, the top or bottom of the screen. And then rand modulus height minus 60. So what this little line of code does here is it will spawn our comets at a random, random y coordinate no, no closer to the top than 30 pixels and no closer to the bottom than 30 pixels. Um, and that keeps us somewhat centered, but just so we're not you know, scraping the edges of our screen there. All right, and then finally, since we don't want to do this multiple times per cycle, we're going to break. All right, great. Now, like I said, I used the random number generator here. So what I need to do is I need to seed that random number generator. And what that means is uh, give the random number generator some, some value so that every time we play the game it's different. If I don't seed it, then every time uh, it will end up being exactly the same. So I'm going to come down here to where I'm initializing all my game components and I'm just going to type srand time no. Alright, so what that does is it's, it seeds the random number generator, that's what srand does, with the current time, whatever right now is. And since we're seeding it with whatever right now is, every time this is executed, the time is going to be slightly different. We're going to get a slightly different uh, random uh, seed. Alright, great. So that handles the, the starting of our comet. And then the last thing we need to do uh, is we need to update the comet. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and start my, uh, my definition right here. So like all the other ones, it's going to be for int i equal to zero, i is less than size, i plus plus, and then I'm going to test if comet sub i dot live, so we need to update the living ones. I'm going to do comet i dot x minus equals comets sub i dot speed. All right, so that means it's just going to come soaring towards the left hand of the screen. Um, and then one more thing I need to do um, is I need to then test if comets sub i dot x less than zero comets sub i dot live equals false. All right, so that means that as we update, if it ends up going off the screen, we're just going to kill it because it doesn't exist anymore. And now let's just, we, we created the, the start comment and the update comment, so let's go ahead and get those plugged in. And we do that up here in our update function. So we see that we're updating our bullets, uh, and then right underneath that we're just going to do Start comet, passing in comets, and num comets, and then we are going to do right away update comet with comets and num comets. So basically, we're going to update our comets right after we we start them uh, because this won't always result in starting a new comet, and then we'll just update the ones that are alive. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see that uh, even though we only start a comet, you know, one out of every 500 of those, those cycles, um, we still get quite, uh, quite a good uh, smattering, healthy smattering of these comets started at the, at, uh, at the same time. So um, that ends up working out pretty well. You'll see here we have no collision detection yet, so nothing's actually happening there when we shoot these items. Um, but we'll go ahead and handle that in the videos coming up. So uh, for now, that is we have our player object, we have our projectiles, and we have our enemies or our comets. Um, and then in the next video, we are going to look at uh, uh, some collision detection.